historian um, at Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park. And I'm, I'm glad that, um, that you all have, um, have come out today to uh, participate in, um, in this program, um, one of, um, of several that the National Military Park is offering um, this weekend and through the coming week and next weekend to recognize the 155th anniversary of the, uh, the Battle of Chickamauga. Uh, many of you all I know have um, participated in several of the, uh, the walking tours that I have um, led since, um, since Friday evening. <clears throat> and I hope that, um, that you um, um, have also taken an opportunity to see some of the, uh, the other programs. Um, and I recognize a few new faces in the, um, in the crowd for this one and hope that you too have taken in some of the um, other, um, other programs. Um, I, um, I myself wouldn't mind um, seeing the, uh, the Confederate Infantry Program. Uh, those guys are some of the, uh, the better Confederate living historians. Um, well, I shouldn't just say Confederate. They do Union as well, um, both Union and Confederate living historians. They always do a, um, a good job, and Lee White um, um, is certainly a good interpreter of the, the soldier experience. Uh, but. Um, you know, if you are a little frustrated that um, you can't take in all of the programs, um, I say good. It means we've got plenty for you to do here. So, um, so come back um, uh, sometime in the um, in the future. Uh, this program is going to look at um, part of the um, of the Confederate um, uh, breakthrough, um, and in particular from the perspective of um, the the, um, the Texas and Arkansas Brigade. Uh, um, James, um, or excuse me, Jerome Robertson. Uh, maybe I should ask if we have any Texans in the crowd or Arkansans. Okay. Um, normally I have to ask that about Texans because I'm about to say something disparaging about the Lone Star State. Um, but, um, uh, but this time um, um, uh, it's actually going to be a relatively positive um, Texas perspective. So usually when I have to ask that, I'm talking about the importance of Chattanooga. Um, and I say that the Confederacy could have survived if, as they did, they lost um, easy access to their territory west of the Mississippi River, which, of course, includes Texas. And Texans generally don't like that interpretation. So, um, um, but, uh, uh, but anyway, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, um, to, to walk from here um, and, um, and join the, um, uh, the Confederate attack. Uh, we will um, we'll start out... Um, uh, walking um, um, probably um, since the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, probably right across the grass here. Um, and then we'll be partly on the paved road, on the shoulder of the Lafayette Road, um, some additional paved road, and then we'll um, transition to, um, uh, to trails um, as we follow um, the Texas Brigade in their forward movements. How can you talk about open woods? Um, this this is actually too open, um, but um, but yes, um, uh, and um, and we should see. Um, uh, we'll actually, if, if, if I remember, um, we will walk through a place where we have um, a, a very good um, open woods um, atmosphere. Now we um, we've not been able to achieve that by open range grazing of um, of cows, horses, pig, sheep, and goats as much as I would like to, um, uh, or by fire, um, but by, um, by other um, means, mechanical means and, and chemical means. Um, but we, we will go through an area where we have um, reduced the, uh, the understory vegetation to something very close to what it was at the time of the battle. As you look into the woods here, you start seeing a little bit of that um, here. In fact, you can see the, uh, the dire field through the trees there. And that's more than 100 yards through. If we went over where the woods really begin, um, that is, um, is more, well more than 100 yards through the woods. So that, that starts to be the kind of open woods that um, would have characterized the battle. All right? Let's set up.